Namaste. So in yesterday's video, we mentioned the Narada Bhakti Sutra. So I thought it would be a good idea to present a couple of sutras from Narada, which he uses to explain bhakti. So let's take a look at the opening sutra. Atato bhakti vyakya syamaha. Now, therefore, the exposition of the principle of devotion. This is so reminiscent of the Brahma Sutra or Vedanta Sutra, which opens with the same word, atato. Ata, ataha. Now, therefore, which implies the pre existence of a certain context. Because therefore means a conclusion. In other words, we said this and that and the other thing, and now the conclusion is bhakti. <laughs> so what is he talking about? He's talking about the previous stage of the development of consciousness, which is karma yoga. Here's our good old chart. And you see that karma yoga is really the foundation of the yoga system. Yoga, of course, means linking with God, linking the individual soul or being with the infinite being or the super soul, paramatma. So atma, the soul, becomes linked with paramatma, the supreme, and this is yoga. Yoga means joining, linking. So if one has successfully uh, completed, or actually you never complete it, <laughs> but has successfully performed karma yoga, bhakti yoga will arise spontaneously. So therefore, we better talk about it and explain it so you understand what's happening. Just this morning, one of our viewers wrote, I want to practice a mantra. I want to understand how sound becomes manifestation. So I told him, well, choose a mantra, any mantra, and stick with it. And also do puja, do rituals of worship to the deity of that mantra. So he chose Ganesh. Ganapati. And uh, we just happened to have a series on how to worship Ganesh because he is the, uh, the god of beginnings. And if you're going to start something, you should always worship Ganesh in the beginning to remove all obstacles. So I guess he's going to try that. We'll see how it works out. But this is karma yoga. Why? because it's following rules and regulations given in the scriptures. When that puja or that mantra or that love and devotion for that deity becomes spontaneous, then it's bhakti. And the difference is that in the beginning, we have to follow something external, the scriptures, the spiritual master, or the great devotees, the examples they have given. But then we start to discover something within ourselves. And of course, that is ultimately the self, Brahman, pure consciousness. But in the beginning, it has a form and a name. Name and form, Nama Rupa. And so in the case of Bhakti, that form is described in the second and third sutras. Let's take a look. Sattvasmin parama prema rupa amritta svarupa Bhakti is of the form of intense love of the beloved and it is of the nature 
of nectar. So just like in the Patanjali Yoga Sutras, in the second sutra, he defines yoga. We covered that, I don't know, a few days ago. Similarly, in the Narada Bhakti Sutra, he defines bhakti. And bhakti is of the form of intense love. Huh? He even uses the same word, rupa. That, and it's plural, rupa. Huh? Why? Because bhakti can have different forms depending on the object, depending on the beloved. And when that beloved is loved, there are five basic forms or flavors of that love, which are neutrality, servitorship, friendship, parenthood, and conjugal love. These five are the principal rasas. So, of course, in our line following Ramana Maharshi, uh, we investigate or look into Ananya Bhakti. Because Ananya Bhakti is when one realizes that God, the Absolute or the Supreme, is one's very self. And the path of Kula Yoga, Kundalini Yoga, the worship of the Goddess, is our path because that is the bridge that links the duality of form with the unity of being. And we realize that everything that is manifest, including ourselves, our bodies and minds and so on, is the goddess, the energy of God. God is the energetic. Brahma, or Shiva, is the energetic, and Devi, or Shakti, is the energy. So she is the manifested universe. She is all energy, starting with time, space, consciousness, perception, ideation, desire, name and form, and so on. But then he goes on to say, and bhakti is of the nature of nectar. And he uses the word swarupa. Svarupa is not an ordinary form, but it is the essential form, that which makes something what it is. Just like when we see the deity, either male or female, or both, this is the human form, the essence of what it is to be a human being. And of course, they manifest extreme compassion. This compassion or love is what being a human being is all about. And if we don't take the chance, the opportunity of human life to develop this compassion until it becomes all embracing, then we have to go back into the animal species or to a lower condition of birth. And, you know, this is the tragedy of most people's lives, that they don't take this opportunity of having human intelligence to go deep into the scriptures and the practices and purify themselves of the upadis, the coverings, and realize their true nature. Because once you realize that actually God is within myself, or God is myself, <laughs> the self, the self of everyone, then you realize at the base we are all one. And so there is no distinction between myself and another, between he and she and mine and somebody else's. <laughs> so the person on this platform automatically gives up all desires for ownership or enjoyment or power or whatever. 
and simply relishes the beauty of this love and compassion, which is all embracing, including all beings, and actually the whole universe. This is love of God. This is bhakti, the greatest love. So I want to read a couple of verses from the Srimad Bhagavatam that describe the symptoms of this kind of love. This is spoken by Lord Kapila to his mother in the fifth canto. Because he is completely absorbed in thoughts of me, the devotee does not desire even the highest benediction obtainable in the upper planetary systems, including Satyaloka. He does not desire the eight material perfections obtained from mystic yoga, nor does he desire to be elevated to the kingdom of God. Yet, even without desiring them, the devotee enjoys all these benedictions, even in this life. My dear mother, devotees who receive such transcendental opulences are never bereft of them. Neither weapons nor the changes of time can destroy such opulences. Because the devotees accept me as their friend, their relative, their son, preceptor, benefactor, and dear most self, they cannot be deprived of their possessions at any time. See, this is what is meant by Swarupa, one's own self. So when it is understood or when it is realized that the object of the greatest universal love is within one's own self, and indeed is one's self, then this universal love can develop to embrace all beings, all creatures, all manifestations, everything. See, this is love of God. This is bhakti. And this cannot be mandated or legislated or forced or controlled. It's something that has to arise spontaneously from within by self-realization. That requires lots and lots of good karma. <laughs> so the way to generate that good karma is by karma yoga. That's why we stress continued performance of karma yoga, even in the highest stages of self-realization. And of course, Ramana Maharshi and other great sages showed this example by continuing their activities of service, even after realization, even in the stage of ajata, ajatavada. The view that the universe was never born. It was never born because Brahman cannot be divided. When we look at the universe, we see what is called jagrat. Jagrat means the innumerable names and forms of the manifestation. But this manifestation is also called maya, that which is not. That means it's just an appearance. It's not real in the same way that Brahman is real. It's impermanent, always changing, and therefore it's unsatisfactory. It cannot give us the full satisfaction that we want because we know all of this is going to change. It's just a matter of time. And finally, everything that we can perceive outside ourselves is not self. So how can it be satisfying to the soul? So because we realize that God is our very self and that God is the ultimate object of love, the devotee achieves complete satisfaction 
of Sat Chit Ananda, unlimited being, unlimited consciousness, and unlimited Ananda, or joy. This is the result of the development of bhakti. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.